Hey, what's up, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of Fitness Goal Friday. Today, we are gonna talk about a critical message that needs to be heard by probably a lot of y'all, and that's stop beating yourself up. The goal of the Best You Podcast is to allow you to feel confident about what you need to do, why you need to do it, and how to do it in order to get closer and closer to your best you. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Fitness Goal Friday. Today's message is something that is absolutely critical, and it's something that I've included into my 10-week transformation because of how much that I have seen it over the years, and that's this topic about stop beating yourself up. All of us are so critical of ourselves on a regular basis when we see ourselves not living up to maybe the standards that we set for ourselves, or maybe it's just standards that other people are setting for ourselves. And so when we see ourselves falling short of not being who we could be or not being who we should be, then we very quickly criticize ourselves. And this is detrimental for two reasons. One, it's bad for the relationship that we have for ourselves. And number two is that it doesn't help you moving forward. So let's talk about that first one real quick. It's bad. It tarnishes the reputation and the relationship that you have with yourself. You see, you say things to yourself, probably internally, you probably don't talk to yourself that much externally, but some of you I'm sure do, but you say stuff to yourself internally that you would never dare say to anybody else. You are so mean to yourself sometimes that if you actually heard yourself say it, you'd be like, damn, that was, that was pretty mean. That was pretty critical. And so oh, you want to start by noticing that. You want to start by being aware of the fact that you are being overly critical of who you are because when you look at other people and they make mistakes, the people that you love, at least when you see the people that you love make mistakes, you're pretty quick to forgive them because you know, they're a human being. But when you look at yourself and you see a mistake, you don't give yourself that same sort of grace that they would even lend to you. And so you want to start off by Realizing it's really important to give yourself grace. It's really important to realize that you're not perfect. It's really important to realize that you're going to screw up. And so it's not about perfection, but it's about progress. Now, if you're making the same mistakes over and over and over and over and over again, something needs to happen. You need to come up with a different strategy. You need some other help around you, some other assistance. But when there are less frequent falling short or times where you fall short of who you could be, you need to give yourself a little bit more grace. That's the first thing to hopefully repair the reputation and the relationship that you have with yourself. The second thing is it's just not going to help you out moving forward. If you're critical of yourself, you're not going to be identifying a solution to help you out moving forward. And one of the things that I help people do in the 10-week transformation is I help them identify two different things. One, what did it help them be successful in a week that they were successful? And then a week that they weren't as successful, I helped them identify the things that led them to being not as successful as they could could have been. And that's where it comes to curiosity. There was one girl, I always give this, always love this example. There was one girl who was frustrated with herself when she hopped on an accountability call with me and she was frustrated because she had missed a couple of morning workouts the previous week. And she was like, oh, like I missed the morning workouts, but I'm gonna be better this week, don't worry. I was like, well, hang on. Like, what happened? Why did you miss the morning workouts? And she was like, oh, well, I was tired and I pressed snooze on my alarm and I was frustrated. Oh, don't worry about it. And I was like, no, like, okay, so you were tired and you pressed snooze. Why do you think that was the case? And she's like, well, I just, I couldn't fall asleep on the night before because my mind was racing. And I said, okay, why do you think your mind was racing? And she said, hmm. well, you know what? I know I had coffee at about 3 p.m. on those nights, on those afternoons. And I think that kept me up and I think that kept my mind racing. And I was like, okay, boom. That allows us to actually take action moving forward. Okay, let's make the commitment this next week of not drinking coffee past 2 p.m. on the days before that you work out. And that's exactly what she did. She didn't have the coffee. She woke up, did not press news and got her workouts in. And so if I had approached her with sheer criticism and just beating her up and tried to strong arm her, into being more disciplined the next week, that would not have been helpful at all. Now, 
it could have been maybe helpful for a week, but it wouldn't have been a long-term solution. It might've put a Band-Aid on it, but it wouldn't have been a long-term solution. But if I could coach her and teach her how to be curious as to why she maybe felt short, then she could identify things that she can then game plan against moving forward. Because I think so much about being successful is on the front end, forecasting out and identifying potential excuses and potential obstacles and challenges that could present themselves in the upcoming week. And then identifying things that you can do to hopefully overcome those excuses, obstacles, and challenges. And so if you are starting the week off and you look at the upcoming week and know it's going to be a really busy week at work and you know you're not going to be able to get the same workout schedule in. Well, okay, well, maybe you don't get full hour workouts in, but maybe you get 30 minute workouts in and maybe you're not going to be able to get them done in the morning, but maybe you can do a walk at lunch. And, you know, maybe the week is just going to be hard. So you have to get a couple of good workouts in during the weekend. And you can only identify those things if you are curious as to how to set yourself up for success. So when you go to hold yourself accountable, with whether or not you follow through on something that you said you were gonna do, you need to approach yourself with curiosity rather than criticism. A a couple of other examples that I like to give with the curiosity over criticism is people will often go out to brunch or lunch or dinner, whatever kind of meal it is with their friends or they go to a concert or a, a sporting event and that gets the best of their diet, right? They'll have nachos, they'll have fries, they'll have burgers, hot dogs, whatever it is. And so one of the things that a lot of people are identifying about themselves is they only really have those, they don't even really want them that much, but they only have them because they're hungry and it's there. And so one of the things that they have been able to be curious enough about is like, okay, I'm just really hungry. I don't really actually want it. I'm just hungry. And so the commitment, the pill to make in order to overcome that excuse or obstacle is to eat before going to that sporting event, to eat breakfast before you're going to Easter brunch to make sure you have a good snack before going out to dinner so you're less likely to order the unhealthy thing. You're only able to identify those things if you're not as critical of yourself and you are curious as to how you can improve moving forward. That also goes for curiosity when you're successful. That's one of the biggest things that people forget. You hear oftentimes people say, you want to learn from your failures. You want, to, you want to learn from your drawbacks. Of course you want to do that. And most people know that whether or not they actually do it is, is another story. But most people don't even know or don't even realize and definitely don't take action on learning from their wins or learning from their successes. The Alabama Crimson Tide, the New England Patriots, they don't learn more from their failures because all they do is win. So they learn from their successes. They learn like, okay, what did lead us to winning this game? What did lead us to winning this championship? Okay, let's let's kind of do that again, right? That would be a good idea to do that again, to do the thing again that allowed us to be successful. So when you identify something in a particular week that did allow you to be successful, hey, maybe you should do that again. But again, you can only do that if you're curious as to why you were successful in the first place. So y'all, we have got to stop beating ourselves up. We have got to stop doing it. It is unhealthy with the relationship that we have with ourselves. And I actually just recently got off a call with a current client of mine. And I think one of the, I wasn't sure one of the best steps to overcoming that self-criticizing that we are very prone to doing. But I think one of the things that I really realized when I have conversations with people is they'll give themselves actually some credit when I'm having conversations. Like, I I know I'm actually doing pretty well. I know I'm doing better than I have in the past. I know it's not perfect, but I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing these things. I had this small win. I had this small win. My pants are starting to feel better. And I am eating healthier meals. My snacking still might not be on par, but I'm eating healthier meals. And so they'll identify things that are wins. And so they give themselves a little bit of credit. But if you only stay in your own little world, and you don't speak out loud some of the things that you're doing that are good, or you don't write down some of the things that you're doing are being good, then you can very much put yourself down. And when you put yourself down, you don't have, and just internally, you don't really have that outside third-party perspective. But if you verbalize to somebody else some of the things that you say, or you write down some of the things that you say that are critical of yourself, you can hear it out loud or you can see it on a piece of paper and you're like, that is me. Nobody would ever say that about me. So why am I saying it about myself? 
So I think a big step is for those of you who are really critical of yourself is find somebody to speak to about these certain things or journal for five to 10 minutes on a regular basis as to how you're feeling. And you realize if you are writing critical things about yourself, then you're almost seeing it from a third party perspective. And you're like, man, why am I being so critical of myself? Like I need to be easier on myself. I wouldn't expect these sorts of things out of anybody else. So why am I expecting it out of myself? I don't, and, and other, other people don't view me this way. So why am I viewing myself this way? Anyways, you got to stop being critical, critical of yourself and beating yourself up by most of the time when you're holding yourself accountable, approaching yourself with curiosity rather than criticism. I hope that helps some of you guys. Give yourself some grace. Give yourself some damn grace, would you please? <laughs> In the spirit of the Easter season, give yourself some grace, please. If you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you share it with a friend or family member. I'm sure you know a friend or family member who beats themselves up on a regular basis, who is super self-critical, and you feel bad because you just want them to see themselves the way that you see them. You feel bad because you just want them to see themselves the way that you see them. And if they did, sure, they wouldn't maybe make a flip right away, but over time, they might gradually be able to have a little bit higher self-esteem and a little bit higher self-worth. So send this episode to them. Send this episode to somebody who consistently beats themselves up and who is consistently self-critical. And also, if you feel like you want help with this and you need somebody to talk to about these sort of things and you need somebody to be curious as to what you can do on a weekly basis to set yourself up for success, that is what the 10-week transformation is for. So make sure you go to nickcarrier.com slash 10WT. If you do find yourself being overly critical and you do find yourself struggling to overcome that, then the 10-week the transformation is for you. Again, nickcarrier.com slash 10WT. Whether or not you're in Nashville or somewhere else, you can start it at any time. The virtual program is amazing. It's helped so many people up to this point. You can go to nickcarrier.com slash 10WT and start the virtual program today if that's you. If you're in Nashville, there's start dates happening all the time. So be on the lookout for them and I'll probably be letting you know. So anyways, nickcarrier.com slash 10WT. It will change your life promise you that. Other than that, I hope the messages today will help you get closer to your fitness goals. And ultimately, I hope the messages today will help you get closer and closer to your best you.